What's up guys, this is Danny Matrango with Mind Pump TV, and today we're gonna to be going over the lunge and some variations that you can apply to really improve your performance. When it comes to lower body training, there's typically two movement patterns people prioritize. Squatting patterns and deadlifting patterns. Squatting patterns that hit the anterior or front side of the body a little more heavily. Deadlifting patterns that hit the back or posterior side of the body a little more heavily. My personal favorite in my years of training is actually the lunge mechanic or the lunge pattern. This has a nice way of hitting both the front and the back side of the body, as well as some of the core and subsystems that help with stability. Because unlike the squat and the deadlift, this is done one side at a time. When I teach the lunge, I like to teach it from the ground up for two reasons. When you start from the top and step into it, you have some instability there and it can be a little bit difficult to get your footing right. If you break it down and teach it from the ground up, you get the opportunity to start in a stable position, as well as make sure that the main joints are lined up. The first checkpoint we have, we wanna make sure that the shoulder, hip, and knee create a straight line. This is gonna give you some stability, but it's also gonna keep all the joints exactly where they need to be. The second point, the back big toe. We wanna to make sure that there's some support and bend in that back big toe, because we're gonna pivot through it. The third point is the shin of the lead leg. We want that to be as vertical as possible. We don't want to be way out over the front. We don't want to be way out here. We wanna be right in this vertical shin position. This allows us to recruit the hamstring, quad, and glute evenly throughout the movement. And that's the entire reason I love the lunge so much. You know you're doing this lunge correct if you feel the workload split evenly across the quads, hamstrings, and glutes, and the front and the back leg. If you feel it too much on the lead leg, you might need to make an adjustment as to where that foot is, and same thing goes for the back leg. You know you're nailing it if you feel it evenly across both legs and all muscle groups. One of the most common issues I've come across in my years training associated with the lunge is knee pain. The reason I think a lot of people experience knee pain when they first start lunging is because they start with a variation that's a little too advanced. Most people are inclined to start with a walking lunge. The walking lunge is a great exercise and it's fine, but it is more advanced than doing it in a stationary position. When you step forward, you allow the knee to travel more forward over the toe. This is gonna create greater force at the knee joint. And if you're already predisposed to knee pain, it's not the best place to start. If you start stationary with, again, the shoulder over the hip over the knee and allow all the muscles and all the joints to share the load more evenly, you can build up the structures. You can allow the muscles to get strong enough to support something like a walking lunge or a reverse lunge. As is the case with any exercise, breathing and tempo are important. Breathing for the lunge is very similar to breathing for the squat. We wanna inhale and hold the breath as we go down. Exhale as we come up. This helps the core recruit all the right muscles needed to stabilize the pelvis and the spine throughout the movement. As for tempo, I always recommend going slow and controlled when you're doing something for the first time or looking to establish and form a movement pattern like the lunge. That way your body and, and joints have time to acclimate to the movement. You don't do anything too fast. I would recommend a two second eccentric, a one second hold, and a two second concentric. To wrap things up, I think the lunge is a fantastic lower body movement that belongs in everyone's program. For novices who are incorporating lunges for the first time, I would recommend sticking with body weight variations like the ones we showed today for at least three to four weeks while you establish the right movement pattern. After you've got that down, feel free to add weights in the form of dumbbells, kettlebells, barbells, maybe even moving into advanced variations like walking or Bulgarian split squats. But the lunge is a fantastic movement for you to incorporate in your workouts anytime you train your lower body, or if you train total body, it can be a standalone leg workout. All right, thanks for tuning in, you guys. If you guys liked that video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Also, if you have any questions regarding this video, just leave them in the comments below. We'll be coming back periodically and answering those for you.